All right, so we have two protocols actually, not only one. So you have two for the price of one. LoRa and LoRa1. So you, you notice immediately that the difference is one, right? What does that mean, one? One is wide area network, actually. Uh, so this is a, a that that makes that makes a big network, right? Wide area network. So it's it's uh, LoRa is um, uh, uh, if I remember it's uh, uh, low power for low and rise long range. Yeah. So it's a low power long range network. Uh, and the difference between the two is that LoRa is only the radio part. So when you are speaking about LoRa, you are just speaking about frequencies, right? Things that are only the radio. Uh, frequencies, bandwidth, uh, this kind of thing. So why, why LoRa 1 is both LoRa, so radio protocol, and a one wide area network, so how to deliver the message to the recipient. Right, how your message arrives. So it's uh, a radio protocol, and this one we add something which is how to deliver this message. All right. So here is a we start uh, with uh, big equations. Don't be afraid. Uh, this is the equation of the capacity of any network, actually, not only LoRa one. And you find it in the textbook uh, of the school. What is the capacity of of, of my network. Uh, this capacity, the capacity is, uh, in, let's say, the speed of your network, a uh, bit per second, right? The throughput, how much you can get, how much, uh, is it, uh, how fast is it, right? And this is dependent on different parameters. The bandwidth, which is the number of frequencies you have in Hertz, how large is your band of frequency, the signal power and the noise, right? So, the no uh, of course, if you put more power, you can have more capacity. And uh, if you have a lot of noise, of course, that will reduce your capacity, right? So, imagine you are in a bar, right? Maybe now it's COVID, so you cannot be there. But if you are uh, in a bar, uh, it's very noisy, right? And you want to speak with your friend which is on the other side of the bar right and there is a lot of noise so what can you do to to make uh, to speak to your friend right in the other side of the bar any idea yeah you can speak louder exactly that's that's the signal power here right you can speak louder another idea Right. For instance, you can speak slower. If I speak slower like this, it will be easier to understand, right? If I, if I speak very fast, you don't understand, right? So, um, right, this is, uh, this is uh, also the frequency here in Hertz. Hertz is a frequency, so if, if I have a low frequency, they can hear me far away, right? So that this and if you have a high frequency, so this is a trade-off. With high frequency, uh, I can have a, a big throughput, but I don't go very far, right? And uh, of course, in the, if, the, if there is a lot of noise, that reduces uh, my bandwidth. All right. Uh, so this is here the the dilemma, right, between uh, the energy and the range. So here in this graphic, you recognize uh, several things you, you already know, like the Wi-Fi, uh, the 2G, 3G, 4G for cellular networks. Uh, but we have also some new protocols. Oh, sorry, you already know Bluetooth also. Uh, and we'll study this, this corner here, Sigfox, LoRa, 5G, okay, and uh, narrowband IoT. Those are new protocols. They were not there before. So this angle here was free before. And now there are, there are new, uh, new concurrents in this corner. Uh, so this graphic, basically vertically, 
it is a distance. And uh, Wupan, Wulan, Wuman, do you know what they mean? So Wupan is a, a personal area network, right? LAN is a local area network. So personal area network is just me and uh, maybe some meters. So Bluetooth is there. Bluetooth, it goes up to, like, let's say, two meters. It will not go on the other side of the house. But uh, VLAN, for example, Wi-Fi, it can go all the, if it can cover all your house. And other protocols, uh, I don't M might be metropolitan, metropolitan area network. It's all the city, right? And a uh, 3G antenna can do that. And even more, right? LoRa can cover up to uh, let's say seven kilometers. So here we have so. Uh, with LoRa, you go very far, but you have a very low throughput. Throughput means you cannot put a lot of data there. Uh, one LoRa message is 200 bytes. 200 bytes. So this is very small. It's an SMS, right? 200 bytes is, is an SMS. So each message is 200 bytes. So we, you will not download a, a, a movie with LoRa, right? You can do that with Wi-Fi because it has a much better throughput here, 10 megabytes per second. Uh, but of course, the energy of the Wi-Fi consumes much more and it goes not very far. So this is all, all a, a trade-off, let's say. Uh, LoRa is also very low energy, so it can send very far it consumes not a lot, very small actually. Uh, you, you can go several years on a single battery uh, with LoRa, uh, but it sends very low amount of data. And that's okay for applications like IoT, because in IoT you send very small amount of data. So you send uh, for a sensor, sending the, the humidity of the terrain every 10 minutes, it's very s small amount of data, it's some octet each time. So it's just a value, right? Uh, so this is it. So we have those different protocols and th they have uh, different data rates. This is the amount of data you can send. Wi-Fi, a lot of data. LoRa, not a lot. Can you see? 18 bytes per second. It's very small. Uh, and the sensitivity. Sensitivity is uh, like you have a sensitive uh, here. You can hear very small uh, things, small sound, right? And the lower it, it is, the more sensible you are, right? And uh, LoRa is this, uh, this low sensitivity. That means it can go far. But so there are different protocols uh, uh, in this, this angle here, long range, and low energy. Uh, I talk about LoRa, but there is also narrowband IoT. It's a uh, concurrent, right? And this one works uh, with. Uh, I can show you maybe uh, in a other conference. Uh, it works with a SIM card also. LoRa works with that SIM card. And uh, they have different also tr sort of trade off So can you see the two circles here? Um, this is a mapping of narrowband IoT in red and uh, LoRa 1 in green. So you can see that LoRa 1 is more on the upper left, right? While uh, no, uh, narrowband IoT is more down there. That means that LoRa 1 uh, is better on battery, so it will consume less battery, basically. The cost is lower, right? while the narrowband will transmit more data throughput and it will be of shorter latency. Yeah. Hi Edwin. So uh, latency uh, is, what we, is what we call the ping, so it's a, it's a time of a message. It, uh, uh, if you ask something, it will come back how many milliseconds it will come back. This is called the latency. 
So it's more reactive, let's say, if you have a good latency. Right? Any questions? Okay. Uh, so we have also the link. Sorry, this is very. Uh, we are talking about a lot of uh, radio concepts, right? So this is a link budget. Uh, link budget. It's qu it's quite complex. Uh, it's a sort of sum of different parameters, uh, including uh, the, the the cost of sending and uh, the distance. So we are we are here in with lower one. Uh, different uh, at different frequencies. All right. So the LoRa is just a physical layer, and it's uh, uh, just a, a radio protocol. And we'll see after the LoRa one on top of that. So LoRa works with something called the chip. Do you know what is chip, right? I mean, uh, chip is like a bird. So chip is the noise made by the bird, right? Uh, like pew pew, like this one. And this is a, a f it's called a frequency shift. So here we have a frequency shift. So it's not like the FM radio that you have at home or AM radio, which are a frequency modulation and amplitude modulation. Uh, LoRa is still is yet another kind of modulation. It's a, a spread spectrum modulation. S that is that means that all the time uh, the, the LoRa chip will make this kind of of chips that is a continuous change in frequency, right? And this will carry out our data. And uh, we have also a concept. Sorry, where I am? Yeah. So the uh, the LoRa spectral shapes shapes sorry uh, they look like that so you see the three guys here they are quite ideal uh, spectral shape because they are flat on top and then it goes down quickly that means that uh, here is the frequency that we are working on if your chip is modulated around this frequency. So this is the frequency of a LoRa one, the, uh, for example, 868 MHz. So you will work there. And then if you try to go uh, after the frequency, your, ch your chip will simply not be powerful at all. It will not interfere with the other uh, using the same frequency band. So here we have three persons using the same frequency band, uh, the different, sorry, different frequency bands, and you can see that they are not interfering at all because the, the, the curve is dropping down. And another uh, consideration is the spreading factor, which is a lot of one parameter, right? Uh, called the spreading factor or SF in short. And uh, what is the spreading factor? So let's come back in the bar where we were before. So this is, uh, we are in the bar and it's very noisy. And to make yourself heard by your friend in the other side of the bar, uh, you can use different spreading factors. Spreading factor means that you, are, you will speak slowly. You will speak slowly. So uh, a high spreading factor means that you speak more slowly and if you speak more slowly of course uh, you can reach a longer distance but that will take more time to say what you have to say right so just to give you an example spreading factor 12 uh, you will speak for several seconds so, uh, just to send some uh, small amount of data like 200 bytes so if you are spreading factor 12 you will speak for 10 seconds, more or less, right? So 10 seconds, that means you, you really speak slowly, right? If you just want to say a temperature, uh, to send a temperature on LoRa 1, you will speak for 10 seconds. That means um, you also occupy the air, you, op you occupy the bandwidth if you speak for a long time. And there is a policy in LoRa 1 uh, called the fair use policy, fair use policy. 
Uh, this fair use policy says that you need to speak only one person of the time, right? It's like in the bar. So if you want to have a fair use of, of, uh, of speech with your friends, you can say, okay, you can speak only this amount of time. Here, you need to speak only one person of the time to let the other users uh, use uh, the LoRa one, right? Because this is a free, uh, free to use band. So everybody needs to uh, not occupy it all the time. So with the spreading factor 12, you can you, your message will take 10 seconds to leave and then you will need to shut down. You need to shut down for uh, yeah, 99% of the time. So if you do the calculation, you speak 10 seconds, you will need to be um, to shut up for several minutes, right? Just to give you an idea a bit about uh, how this works, spreading factor seven is much more faster. It will leave in more. Uh, your message will uh, leave in one second. Spreading factor three, tenths of a second, much faster. But you will not reach many kilometers. All right, saying the same thing. So with spreading factor twelve. Uh, you have the highest sensibility, as I was saying before. Sensibility means you can hear someone from very far and you, are re you reach a longest range. All right, that's it for, for Laura. Any questions? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, so we can use spinning factor 12. I use it quite, uh, quite often if you don't have uh, a rush. For, for debugging, we'll see, I will try it, but uh, for debugging, uh, it's uh, a bit annoying because uh, you can send a message only like well, once every three minutes, <laughs> so it's, it's quite slow. So sometimes I lower the spreading factor. Okay, thanks. So this is another graphic here showing different spreading factors. So if you have a high spreading factor, like 12, uh, you have a low sensitivity, sensitivity, which is good, so you can reach further. Uh, but of course, the time on air, the time you spend sending your message is high, because you are spreading your message, right? You are speaking it slowly, uh, so you will take a lot of time, and your consumption will be high also, right? And your bit rates will be low, bit rates is the amount of data per second you can send. So if you are speaking slowly, you cannot send a lot of data, right? And the more your spreading factor is small, so you are speaking time speaks faster, uh, then of course bit rates goes high, and the sensitivity uh, goes higher, which is not good. And the time on hair, of course, you don't spend a lot of time speaking. All right. Okay, so on top of this uh, radio protocol, right, uh, with the, that we just saw with the spreading factor and the chip signal, uh, we add the one part, so wide array network. Now we want to talk about networking. Up to now, we just talk about the radio, right, how the data is transmitted over the radio, over the air. Uh, but how is it delivered to a specific person? Because everybody can listen, right? To what you are putting on the air. So now we want to uh, make it secure and deliver it to a specific person. Uh, so this is LoRa one. It's a uh, yeah. It's an, it's called uh, it's part of the LP one, low power, wide area network. And it's optimized for long power for low power. Sorry. And low costs. So this is the architecture of this LoRa one. So here you have your end nodes. So end nodes is like uh, I, sh I show on the camera. So this uh, this what the get, uh, was the dev here is a, a specific end node, and here we are arriving at the gateway. So here the node is here that is transmitting via radio to the concentrator here gateway. And the rest is the internet, actually. So we have two elements called the network server and the application server. Uh, and we have two encryption keys, and we'll see them in the code. 
uh, two encryption keys. Uh, one for encrypting the message from the end node, so we need to encrypt our message from the end node, otherwise anybody can hear what we are saying over the hair. And we encrypt here and it would de be decrypted at the network server level. Network server is owned by the telecom company, usually. In our case, the network server and the application server will be in the gateway. Uh, so everything here in blue is in the WASI gate. Uh, so at the network server, we decrypt our first key. And there is also a second key in the LoRaWAN pro uh, protocol uh, for arriving up to the application server. And this is like that because usually the network server belongs to the telecom operator and the application server belongs to the application owner. So those are different people. So we need to have two different keys. Uh, one for the, uh, the telecom operator and one from the application owner or the end, end user. Right. Uh, so there are different, uh, different gateways already on the market. Uh, WASGate is only one of them and it is compatible also with the other gateways right and this is our, our protocol stack so I, I will give you the, the slides if you need more details uh, I, would, I would just wanted to insist on those two keys uh, called app S key and network S key so let's go in the code now so if you have with you can you open now your uh, arduino id so let, let's do it together uh, you can open arduino id right and uh, during the second part of this uh, conference uh, we'll do a bit of a workshop so if you didn't do with the with prints already, uh, you should install the Arduino ID and uh, install the WASDEF um, library. So there is in documentation WASDEF user manual. Here you should follow this tutorial, right? And install the ID uh, and unzip the sketchbook. So the sketchbook you find it here. You download this sketchbook here, right? You open it. Uh, you unzip it on your PC somewhere, and then you open your Arduino ID. You click on Preferences, and you browse. You browse to the place where you unzip it, uh, the file. Right, so this is the place where I unzipped uh, my, my zip file. Right, once this is done, you, you click on OK and uh, you should be able to find uh, the sketch. So, this is the sketch here. All right, well, once you are doing that, so uh, I will explain you a bit this, uh, this program. So, let's come back here. So uh, as I was saying, yeah, there is two keys, app S key and network S key, right? So this is a network S key in red here and app S key in, in uh, blue or dark. So there are two keys, right? And those two keys, okay, this is another diagram here. So the app S key, and the network S key. So the, the those two keys are encrypting our message at the device level. So on the WASI dev, I will encrypt the message. And if I look my program, I see there is two key here, app S key and network S key. This is my first key, encryption, second key. So my message will be encrypted twice. Right. And at the gateway level, I need also to decrypt it. Right. So now let me show you uh, the gateway. So those of you that 
don't have it so I'm just anticipating a little bit so uh, it, sh it, it shows a dashboard like this one and I can create a new device so this those steps are described in another tutorial and I can find uh, in, in here Wasgate installation and Wasgate LoRa one you should all go also go through those tutorials right if you have already uh, a gateway with you so we are preparing our device here putting the um, identifying the three keys so sorry two keys app s key and network s key and there is also another uh, code which is called a device address right. so this is a device address this is a app s key and this is a network s key right and then uh, i will send some data through uh, lora one for example here i will add a temperature temperature is 35.7 degrees so that might be read by a sensor but here I just put it uh, hard coded like that and then I verify my program ok let me change this value just you can see the change and I upload my program So I have uh, my WASDEV is connected now uh, with my USB cable. So it is done. So I can open the serial monitor. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, close, reopen. Okay, it is starting. So the serial monitor is uh, basically it, it is listening to the USB connection with, with my device with my what it is. So here what it said, it just said that I, I send a message on Nora one it says OK. And it's also received uh, something back. I received a hack acknowledgement actually and with the, some statistics here. Uh, payload is written but there is nothing. There, is, there was no payload. Payload is used for the actuation. So I can show you that too. Uh, Alright, so it sent a message and received the acknowledgement. Uh, now we can check if this message was sent on LoRa 1. So for that, I open my uh, gateway, right? I will refresh, and it is the result is here. So 39.7 degrees. That's what we sent, right? So here we just did the first hop, right? So we sent from WasDev to WasGate, and we see the results uh, on the Wasgate UI. So this is the Wasgate UI here. You can access it on a special address called wasgate.local. It's not internet here, it's just my local network. It's, uh, I'm connected by Wi-Fi to my uh, local router. And if I type this, I can open the Wasgate if it's connected on the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, there are many ways to connect to the to the WASGate, but you can find them on the documentation of the WASGate. Uh, first step is done, so we have here our value. Now, what about the second step? So, from WASGate to WASI Cloud. So, for that, we have to open uh, the dashboard of the WASI Cloud. It's called a dashboard.wasiap.io. Here it is, you have to create an account, right? And I go in the devices and uh, I will filter, just make it easy. And I activate this filter, active devices, because I just sent, and here it is, uh, my temperature sensor simulated, okay, of course, now I have no, no no temperature sensor connected, but I just sent this value hard coded. Uh, it's, it's here, right? So here I just uh, made the final step going towards the cloud. But actually, it, it doesn't stop here. It, the point is, and we'll see that in another conference, is that 
uh, this dashboard here is just to show you the status of your devices but when you are making an application uh, you are making a project for a client you will develop your own dashboard right uh, your own application in javascript in react js in Vue, uh, in angular right all those uh, kind of framework for creating applications uh, and your application will read the data from here right and it will do that uh, through an api we'll see that in the, in the next conference so the api is the available on api dot wasyap dot io api dot wasyap dot io and this is an extensive api for getting your data and uh, of course i will i will show it in more details but uh, why not trying to read it now just i try one of the endpoints here i will get my device uh, what is the name of this device? Okay, the ID. I take the ID. I put that in the API. Execute. And here is the JSON of my device. And there, is, there are many, da many, many informations, many data here. Uh, one is the value, 39.7. That's what we sent. Right? If you look at the code, it's in the Arduino, Arduino code. 39.7 degrees temperature and uh, other informations right so this uh, interface here is just to show you the the api but what you have to do is to make a request uh, with your python application or your javascript application similar to what i just did here you will get the json and you will open this JSON and, and do what you want with this value. Right? And you, you have many other options to get also sensors, actuators, you can uh, talk with gateways and uh, social networks, notifications. So let's not anticipate too much as for the next time. All right, so let me come back to my presentation. So that's it. Here we, we encrypted our message. Uh, we put the two keys on the on the on the Arduino side. So they are in the in here, one and two. And uh, how to decrypt? Right, because you saw that in the gateway we sh show here. The value that was encrypted so how did we do that we need to have the keys also for decrypting in the gateway so this is the gateway here and for this i go in my uh, device and i have to enter the keys so i already did so first key second key does the same here just for the example but they could be different so I will I will show you that in more details in the uh, when we are talking more about the gateway. Uh, but the idea here is that in my code, I want to pick this gateway, this uh, key here. I copy it. Oops. I copy the key. I go in the gateway, and I passed it here. So the point is that they should be equal in the code of your Arduino and in the gateway. If they are equal, your gateway will be able to decrypt your temperature sensor value here and display it here. And then it will also send it to the cloud uh, for, uh, for display and you can use it in your application. Are there any questions up to now? Any doubt? Uh, if you need to change the key, very good question. So basically the encryption keys, so the, the ones that are very long, uh, you don't need to change it or you can change it as you want. The, the only constraint is that they should be equal 
uh, between the, here the code and the gateway. So uh, basically in the, in the code here and in the gateway uh, in here they should be the same. The device address is just an address actually. It should be of course it should be equal between the, the code of the, the Arduino the device address is here and the gateway should be the same. But uh, uh, if you have several devices, this address needs to be different for each device because the device will uh, send the message. Uh, and if you have two devices with the same address, the, the, the um, gateway will think that the same device. So if you want to have two devices, you need to change this device address. So you can put zero, uh, you can change one number, for example, the second will be like that. You see? So the, you can invent them, but, right? It's not a problem. The only uh, constraint is that your device address needs to be unique. Uh, I will show you also quickly the actuation. So with the same sketch, so you can open this sketch and it does both, it does both sensing and actuation. So here we have, if you look a bit more at the code, so the sending is quite simple. Here we are sending the data on LoRa1, send LoRa1. If you, uh, we don't see the spreading factor here because I use the default, but uh, I could also set the spreading factor. If Wazidev is a, we have a library called Wazidev. It's included here, wazidev.h. If you if you inspect this one, uh, you can see the spreading factor as well. So here, what we do, uh, we have this XLPP, which is a buffer. And in this buffer, we add, it's a payload buffer actually, and uh, we add the temperature. So we add the temperature in the buffer, and then we send that buffer. Is clear? So this is send LoRa1, and we send our buffer. And it goes on the gateway. Yeah, it is clear for everyone. And then we arrive at the level of the receive. So this is uh, here before we send the payload. Send, send over LoRa1 and then we want to receive. And this is the function is called receive LoRa1. Same thing, we give it a buffer empty this time and it will put inside uh, what was received. And then we have to analyze it, display uh, some statistics, and display the payload. Let's try. Uh, all right, I'm coming back on my gateway. And you see that I have already added an actuator here. Value is false. It's a JSON value. And the actuation right now, you can do it from the cloud. We are adding also the possibility to do it in the gateway side. The gateway is just a display. Uh, so if you go on the cloud, you can also add an actuator here. I go in this actuator and uh, I can see a switch here. Uh, there are different uh, kind of switch. If you click on the little pen here, you can edit it. So those are the different types possible that you can send. So here the idea that we have, we are designing an actuator uh, from the cloud and we want to send it some data. So imagine you have a motor, for example, or a lamp, a lamp uh, or a display attached to your WASIDEV or your Arduino uh, board, right? And you want to control it from the cloud. So you can select either a string, for example, that's a, a display, a number, that, for example, uh, the position of your motor can be controlled by a number, a boolean, a lamp with on-off controlled by a boolean, 
or anything else. So or just an object, for example, a complex JSON object. So let's start with the Boolean. So I select Boolean, I submit, right? And uh, here, yeah, and I switch and, and I flip the, the value. So I flip it to it was true, I flip it false, right? And let's check if the gateway is now updated. So now it is false, all right? Let's flip it the other way just to make sure. I flip it true. Come back here, our fish. Yeah, it's true now, right? So the connection between the cloud and the gateway just works. So the, here we are jumping. We we made the actuation on the cloud, and it was sent back to the gateway. Now let's check this last step, which is the gateway to the WASDEV actuation, right? So for that, so here. I know that my gateway received the value true for the actuator. Uh, let's let's check if it was sent to the uh, WASIDEV. All right, this is already here. Payload is false, so that was what I was sending. Right. Uh, don't don't care about this one. It's just I think it's a mistake in the code. Uh, payload is false, so. Ah, just another cycle is coming here. Yeah, and then true. Uh, that's what we was manipulating. So you should keep in mind that LoRa 1 and LoRa in general is very slow. So uh, you see that that was Prince was saying that also. But it takes some time. Uh, here, if you look at the code, there is a delay. 60,000, it's uh, one minute. Uh, the cycle will take one minute, right? So if you make an actuation in the cloud, it will take up to one minute uh, to get it. Also because there is a notion of classes in, in, uh, in LoRa 1. So let me come back on the slides. Uh, no, uh, yes, it is here. So we are working now with class A. What does that mean? So class A means that uh, you can have a, down, a downlink. Downlink is when you send the data back to the device. So uh, downlink is, oops, is these steps. So uplink is going up this way. Downlink is going back this way. So downlink is from the cloud to the gateway, gateway to the to the was it dev. And in, with LoRa 1, since it is very low power, your device here will not be listening all the time. Actually, in class A, it will listen only after sending the data. So say your device is sending data uh, once every 10 minutes. Right after having sent the data, it will listen for one second. Right? It will listen for a very short amount of time and then it will go back to sleep so it will shut down and that is to save the energy to save the battery so you have to to know that your device is not listening all the time it will just listen after sending so the cycle will be your device will send the value of a sensor then the, so the was gate and the was cloud will receive that and then they both know that your device will be listening just after. So if there is something to send, they will take the occasion to send that right in the listening window, which is just some seconds. Right. So that's what is happening on my sketch here. Um, let's, uh, let's wait for another cycle. So here it will, it will say... Uh, when the cycle starts, it will say it will start with the sending, and then right after it will listen. So we have that also in the code. So I'm just waiting for another cycle. Okay, it started here. So LoRa one send finish, LoRa one receive finish, and there here it is sleeping now. So you see that it was sending that maybe lasted two seconds and then 
uh, listening two seconds and then go back to sleep. So that's why uh, this is n you will not drive a car with that, right? <laughs> it's very, uh, I mean, it will not be very fast, very reactive. Uh, it is a protocol designed for saving energy. Uh, so it is very cheap and you can use a single battery, a, a smaller button battery for your device, uh, put it in the field, put it uh, somewhere remote and it will work for, for several months uh, on end. All right. So here, if you look at the code, you can see that we are decoding the payload and displaying the payload and it was uh, either true or false. In my yeah, payload was true here. Okay. Uh, and based on that, you can actuate. So I think Prince in the last uh, conference uh, was showing how to make actuation. Uh, with the with the device, right? You can control a relay, for example, a relay, or a motor, or a lamp, or a screen. So you have several examples on the website. Coming back on that website, documentation. Uh, what's the dev? Connect your sensors. Connect your actuators. So, for example, the small screen like this one, uh, OLED screen. Right. Some example of code. So the the code examples. Here are just the code for for um, for device level. There is uh, this code here doesn't contain the LoRa one. The LoRa code is uh, you have to open. Yeah, it is somewhere. Yeah, LoRa one. Right. So when you are working with the device. I suggest you start from this uh, example called actuation, and then putting your code uh, for actuation for communicating with a se real sensor inside. So this is demonstration for the for the LoRa one. So one th one more thing. So you can do a little bit of uh, geolocation with the LoRa one. Right, uh, but it's not as good as GPS, for example. Uh, you can see the GPS here, this bubble, uh, and the size of the bubble is a precision. If you're very precise, like GPS, we can go uh, down to one meter precise uh, uh, precision. Um, Lower eyes here and big big bubble, so like 200 meter, one kilometer. Uh, it's uh, not very precise, this geolocation. However, the battery life would be good and the cost will be low because uh, actually GPS consumes a lot of energy. So if you want to have a, an application of geolocation, I don't know, for example, the geolocation of the cattle, this is a use case we, are, we have seen often, uh, your GPS can consume a little more bat battery. But if you want to be precise, you need to have it. Uh, geolocation works basically. You have to. Uh, you need three gateways. Of course, each gateway has, has its own uh, lo precise location. And then by triangulation, you can calculate your position. Right. And uh, what we did. Uh, another thing is for, for when we uh, program our was a dev here. Uh, with these keys here, which is the app S key and the network S key, we took those keys, we copied them, and we put them in the Wazi gate UI. So here we copied them here, and this manipulation is called activation by personalization. So we personalized our device uh, to activate the LoRa one. So it's called activation by personalization. I have to program my device with dev, ad dev address, app S key, network S key, and put that in the network server, which is a WASI gate in our case. Uh, there is another activation, which is called over the air activation, a bit more complex, uh, where your device, sorry, where your device can be roaming, you can go around, 
with your device and it will receive the keys for, uh, from the different gateways. If you are going from one gateway to another, it will receive the key. However, this, this protocol is a bit more uh, complex and also it, it consumes more uh, memory and our device here is very memory constrained. So the WASDEV has only 3 kilobytes of memory, so a very small device. Uh, it will consume very low amount of power, but you can't, uh, yeah, you cannot put, put very big programs in there. All right, that's it for LoRaWAN.